following panel is part of the Comics Arts Conference. The CAC is an academic conference that takes place every year at WonderCon and the San Diego Comic-Con. Our mission is to bring academics and professionals together with the public to discuss the medium that we all love. Because of its academic focus, CAC programming is a little different from other con programming. We hope you enjoy it. You can find more information about the CAC, including how to apply to present at future meetings, at our website at comicsartsconference.wp.txstate.edu. Welcome to our panel as part of WonderCon at Home. Our panel is called New Directions for Comics Pedagogy, Academics, Creators, and Educators in Conversation. Uh, and I am Susan Kirtley, and I'm here with my colleagues and friends. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Antero Garcia. I'm coming to you from Redwood City, uh, California today. I'm excited to be, I guess, in virtual conversation with all of you. And uh, my name is Peter Carlson, and uh, I'm just outside of Los Angeles, California. And uh, in my days, I'm spending time with Green Dot Public Schools as a literacy curriculum specialist. Um, and comics come into play in that position as well. And then when I'm at home, uh, especially with my daughter growing up and showing her some uh, image and texts combined, comics are um, all over the place. So we're very happy to be here and uh, talking to you about um, directions for comics pedagogy. Um, uh, the three of us, we, we, we have this passion of just comics in general, and we are um, working in uh, various spaces uh, around education. We find ourselves, uh, just the three of us, in continual conversations of like, have you read this? And, uh, oh, have you used this with students? Um, and it, it kind of comes back to, um, I think for each of us, uh, a history of just reading comic books. And um, for me, even before comic books, the funny pages in, on, in newspapers growing up. And then bringing that to classrooms as we ourselves became educators. Um, I met Antero Garcia when we were teaching at a school in uh, South Central Los Angeles um, 14 years ago, about, I think is the timing. Yeah. And um, it was also around that time that uh, I had to get my old comic book collection out of uh, my home because I had a tiny apartment and my parents wanted any <laughs> anything that I'd left behind out of their place as well. Um, so I found my classroom to be a great place to bring all the books that uh, books and comic books that I had read and uh, didn't need but didn't want to get rid of um, and bringing those to ninth and 10th graders. Um, had a profound effect on my teaching, actually, to see students react to a, a print-rich environment, um, to see them gravitate towards um, stories told sequentially, where they could uh, outpace each other and then come back and talk and, have you read this? Have you seen that? This reminds me of this. Um, and this was all at the time as well when, um, you know, superhero movies and television shows were gaining much more popularity. Um, where they were coming out more regularly and students were uh, uh, debating on the differences of uh, through mediums. And, and Tara and I uh, just noted this and that led us uh, down a path of documenting it, documenting the growth of students from ninth through their 12th grade as they uh, engaged um, in English classrooms. And uh, some of those findings of just student engagement, um, both with their own academic um, trajectories, their pathways, uh, but then also the powers that those stories had in, in engaging students in their own um, civic beings uh, became of great interest to Antero and I. Um, and that led us to uh, our first uh, WonderCon and Comic-Con where we would be uh, presenting and uh, presenting through the Comic Arts Conference. Um, and you know, a, a winding road that led uh, myself to sit in WonderCon at Anaheim in, uh, back in 2015. And I saw Susan Kirtley present um, uh, as part of a panel and uh, on, the, on the female community in, uh, in, in Thor. Um, and I was reading that book and loving it. And uh, so I've, I annoyed her with some emails and, um, 
have recently revisited those emails and saw some of the misspellings, but she graciously overlooked those and um, re replied. And then, you know, a few replies later, we were meeting at a Denver Comic-Con, uh, seeing each other present, talking, and then Antero and Susan and I um, launched something that uh, all of us had, uh, had found um, to be a kind of a dream that we hadn't vocalized, which was a workshop for educators um, to discuss ways that comics could be used um, in the classroom. Um, a, a discussion that would involve educators, that would involve comic creators, that would uh, uh, involve academics who were studying, you know, the comic studies. And also, um, you know, showing how so many people occupied multiple spaces, um, different titles in that, you know, we were all comic enthusiasts, we were all educators. Um, there were many comic creators that we knew of that were also educators as well. And um, so we wanted to have a space where people could come and share ideas, learn from each other and continue a dialogue. Um, and we found that both in panels at WonderCon and then through um, San Diego's Comic-Con, um, since around 2015, we've been holding a, uh, a workshop, a workshop for educators, which every year goes through some, some of the theory that we hold dear to our practice, but then tries to highlight different practices from K through 12 setting, uh, college setting, um, and then just other, you know, uh, discourses beyond um, academics. And that led us to then documenting some of the findings that we'd had and including some of the voices that we admired and had also worked with. Um, and that led us uh, to publishing a book that came out last year. Um, and, uh, and Terrell, you can tell us a little bit about that book because you've got a visual aid right there in front of you. So this is With Great Power Comes Great Pedagogy, Teaching, Learning, and Comics. Uh, Susan, Peter, and I are the co-editors of this book. It was a pleasure uh, to get to work with both of you on this uh, and, the, and the various, um, as, as Peter kind of shared, the origin story, the various kinds of workshops that we've done leading up to this. Um, I guess to, as something of an origin story, right, I think Peter offered this, this sense of the ways that he and I as high school teachers brought comics in our classroom and this led us to think about what comics looked like for us. Um, and Peter remains in a, in a coaching position and, and supporting um, English teachers throughout the district uh, that he they works with today. Uh, I work uh, as primarily an educational researcher and teacher educator uh, at Stanford University today. Um, and Susan, I think you come from a slightly different kind of teaching background and research background. Do you wanna say a little bit about, about what, what do you what do you do, Susan? Maybe that's the, maybe that's the easier question. Sure. Uh, you know, I am in Portland, Oregon. I am the director of comic studies here at Portland State, and my background um, is really in rhetoric. Uh, and I I'm a you know I was trained as a rhetorician, um, and then I was a comics lover. And for a long time, these were very separate. In my I had my academic career, and then my what I love to read and and do. Um, and it was over time that I was able to bring those together in terms of using visual rhetoric and rhetorical strategies to analyze um, comics. But I also very much in my role as, you know, a compositionist and focusing on teaching process and writing to, um, to my students at the, at the college level, um, I was bringing in all of these comics. And so it was very exciting for me, both as a scholar and as a teacher to bring, to be sort of bringing in my my own passion for comics into my teaching. And so I've been very devoted to that as well as sort of the, the sort of study of comics um, in my own life. So I think my training is really in rhetoric, um, but I've very much you know, been interested in the development of the field of comic studies. Um, so I have very much, I have really appreciated working with you folks because I'm learning a lot about education and which is interesting, you know, I, all of these techniques that I didn't know about. So that's one of the things I love about these um, these cons is this um, this kind of conversations that we get to have um, through the Comic Arts Conference in San Diego and WonderCon is these you know we get to talk with fans yeah. and with teachers at these workshops and I'm learning so much and it's really exciting for me um, to be trading secrets and insights so that's that's probably more than you needed to know but no no a little it, bit about my background so I think that's really helpful because I think you know there's this unifying wraparound of for us and probably for anyone who's watching this that we're all fans right no, hopefully no one's teaching 
comics because you're forced to and you just you just hate the medium and like this is a terrible thing for you i feel i feel deeply for that person out there if that's you um but I'll, I'll, i imagine everybody is a fan and many many of us who are fans in this space are also educators in various in various kinds of contexts as well as potentially engaged in kinds of research around the meaning of comics or the meaning of using comics in different kinds of contexts right so susan's work guiding uh, comic studies uh, with with students at Portland. Um, Peter thinking about how does he continue to engage uh, with teachers and with students with comics. Um, you know, I think these are these are ways that we're kind of thinking about this. And so what this work, what what this book, right, which I, I hold up, early, I'll hold up again, um, was really trying to do is how do we bring together all of these people who share a similar interest uh, in the use of comics for and through and with teaching a comics pedagogy. And so, you know, at the heart, we are all fans. Um, in this book, we we talked to several creators. We have some amazing creators uh, in this book. Uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick, Linda Berry, David Walker, Brian, uh, Brian Bendis, right? These are um, these are luminaries in our field, as well as people who blur these boundaries. Nick Susanis is both a um, a teacher, a researcher, and a comic artist, right? And these, I think, are all fused in the kinds of scholarship that he creates, uh, and he he contributes to two chapters in this, as well as researchers throughout this book. And so there's there's three different parts. Right? This is this is the quick infomercial about what the book is, in case you want to check it out. But almost half of the book is available online as a preview PDF too. So I encourage you to. Um, to check it out and encourage your library to, to pick it up. Um, but the, you know, the book starts with both some foundational thinking from some leading uh, comic study scholars to think about, you know, what are the traditions of teaching and comics and, and, and how, do, how have we come to this? What's this look like in practice is the second part in terms of um, we can look at kind of after school, middle school, we can look at um, college composition courses and kind of like the gamut of what's it look like to be using comics in classrooms today. And then the last section really pushes on where are we going, right? This is a nascent field, right? We have a whole bunch of people who only in the last couple of decades have been able to find the space and kind of the, the stuffy halls of academia uh, to engage kind of seriously in the work of comics pedagogy. And so this is about, you know, where are we headed, right? There's only been a couple of kind of landmark texts that even define uh, what comics are in a way that are theorized. And so some of these texts push on that, some of these texts push on what are our teaching methods, right? We're still working with kind of archaic classroom designs, in my opinion. What are the, what are the designs for the future and the future of a comics pedagogy? And so Based on all of that, our hope is that this is a book that has some utility. This is a book that um, both provokes some of your thinking, but begins and sustains ongoing conversations. We hope that there'll be other scholarship, maybe you watching this, will be working with us and we'll be continuing the work um, that this book um, didn't even start right, but but I think helps coalesce um, some, some voices from across our field. Um, so noting that, I think Susan's gonna talk a little bit about ways we might be able to use this book and I think we'll get a little hands-on in a moment. Exactly. So uh, we're gonna, I'm going to share an exercise with you in a moment. So you might want to get some paper and a, and a pencil, um, some scratch paper. But in the meantime, I think I think that this book is really, um, in some ways, it's a love letter to the Comic Arts Conference and WonderCon and San Diego Comic Con, and these um, these opportunities for us to have these conversations with educators, with scholars, with creators, and as you said, and as fans. I think this this book, you know, it's a it's a way of uh, it's a text that we really wanted to document these conversations. It's not the end of the conversation in any way. We really are, are focused on continuing these conversations, but it was a chance for us to sort of have a document that pulls together these conversations. So, as my husband pointed out, you might want to use this um, book if you and you and as has been pointed out, get it. You can get it from the library. A lot of it is available as a PDF free. Um, um, but you might want to use it. Let's say you're teaching, um, you're teaching Naomi, or you're reading Naomi, or and you want you like I'm going to find out more about how David Walker and Brian Bendis feel about comics creation and representation, or maybe you know you're teaching. I have taught 100 Demons many times with great success. Go ahead, check out that really inter interesting interview with uh, Linda Berry. We have these great conversations with creators, which I think is really special. Um, to bring creators into this conversation about how we teach comics. Uh, we have really cutting edge scholars talking about concerns about the field. We have Jonathan Flowers, who, you know, talking about, you know, misunderstanding comics and Scott McCloud. And we met him at 
WonderCon and, and started a conversation after a panel and he became a part of this book. And again, I said, this is kind of this love letter documenting all these great conversations with these really wonderful scholars like Dale Jacobs, Bart Beattie and Jonathan Flowers. And they're talking about, you know, some, maybe you're thinking about doing comic scholarship or maybe you're thinking, you know, I have concerns about Scott McCloud. You know, there's great resources. And we also have some really practical strategies and ideas for you to try in your classroom. So Nick Susanas has some wonderful activities. We have great things from various teachers. Um, we have uh, Frederick Kohler. We have all these folks giving you ideas for things that you can use in the classroom. And that's always been key. I think the best things that I do in teaching are often things that my friends and colleagues have shared with me. They're like, oh, I did this activity. And so that's been really key to our conversations, both in our books, but in these workshops is sharing ideas and activities. And I think it, it, I've learned so much. And I think that's really uh, an important part of the conversation and also extending the conversation. Like, how can you use it in a science class? How can you use it in uh, an English class? And I think that in the book, we talk about we can use comics to teach other subjects. So you can teach March or Mouse in a history class. Um, and, may, you know, you, it's a window to other subjects. Um, you can, might be teaching a class that's just about comics. I have um, the good fortune to be able to teach, you know, comics theory or comics history at Portland State. And then we can also use these activities. Maybe your curriculum is pretty specific and you don't have a lot of flexibility, but you can use these sort of comics activities as a way of thinking through ideas. So have your students producing little comics exercises in class. And I have had, you know, a lot of success with that. Maybe I'm teaching a literature class. But I have them draw for 10 or 15 minutes, and it really inspires these great, great uh, discussions. So even if you're, you know, not in a super flexible curriculum, I think it's important to think about ways that we can encourage this sort of visual literacy and using comics as a way of thinking through ideas. So that's the activity that I'm going to share, and I'm going to share my screen. And my friends have agreed to be uh, guinea pigs and uh, try this activity as we go through it. Um, so um, I should say that this is an activity that was adapted um, from my friend Charles Hatfield, as well as this wonderful book um, by, called Cartooning by Ivan Brunetti. And so I've adapted this exercise um, somewhat, but I, I've had great luck with it. So, okay. This activity, your first thing you're gonna do is choose your favorite text-based novel, whatever that might be. So Moby Dick, whatever it is, you're gonna choose your favorite text-based novel. And I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to summarize it in a sentence or two. I'll be generous and give you two sentences if you need it. And I'm gonna work on it as well. Um, so your favorite novel, summarize it in a sentence. Now, if you were working with a class, you might have them, you might give them the novel, like we're talking about this novel, or you can open it up. you another few seconds. Okay. So you've got your sentence or two, giving an overview, a summary. This is good activity for summary. Um, your favorite novel. The next stage, I'm gonna give you about two minutes. I'm gonna set my timer. Two minutes for you to draw this novel in four panels. So I'm timing. You could give your students um, a handout or you could just have them do divide their page into panels or however you wanna do it. So four panels, about two minutes.
it's been about a minute and a half and I've only got about two panels done. So I might give you a few more minutes. So that was about two minutes. I'll give you another minute or so. All right, that was about three minutes. How are you guys doing? Do you need another minute? Are you good? You're good? Okay, all right. So now you can pause, admire your masterwork, and I have one more, one more step for you. Um, I'm gonna give you about two, nah, this won't be too bad. I'll give you like a minute and a half. So be ready to speed draw. Your next and last final challenge is to draw your favorite novel starting now in one panel. Give you about 30 seconds to finish up. All right, uh, how uh, did that go? And, and I, before I actually do that, I'm just gonna give you an example. If you check out Brunetti's book, he's got a wonderful example that you might be able to pull out from your classroom. He talks about adapting uh, Catcher in the Rye into a one panel um, comic. And I highly recommend that book because he talks not about, not just about you know Catcher in the Rye, but he talks about all the choices he makes as he adapts uh, the book. So um, you can see there's this um, little tiny one panel comic where he um, has you know, encapsulated, distilled the essence of Catcher in the Rye. And that's one thing that I really like about this activity is that it's asking your students to think about what's most important in the book. They have to distill it down to its very, very essence. Um, and so when I use this activity in class, I usually ask them, okay, what, what is the difference between your text-based description and your four panel comic and your one panel comic? And I ask them, which was easiest, which was, you know, the hardest, what did you notice as you went from text to 
four panels and from four panel to one panel. And it really, I think, inspires some interesting discussions. And this is a comics activity you could use in a literature class, but really, you know, anytime you're reading a book, you give them the book, they can they could get in small groups and compare pictures. Um, I think it's a really great way of thinking through the important moments in a text and really distilling them down to the essence. As I did with my example from Pride and Prejudice, which has, um, I ended up my one panel, it says, it says we have Darcy the stick figure saying, in the, in the beginning uh, balloon, he says, I, di I dislike you, you are barely tolerable. Then she says, right back at you. And then he says, wait, wait, I love you ardently. And then she says, me too. And so it's this really beautiful evolution of their characters in Pride and Prejudice as so um, eloquently expressed in my uh, visual. And as you can see from my example, you don't have to necessarily be um, great at art. That's not what it's about. I will also say, I always, when I ask students to do things like this, I do them too. And um, I think it, um, it expresses that you do not have to be the greatest artist to learn from these activities. And it's not about um, the quality of the art, although it does give those students who are artistic a really wonderful chance to shine. So that's an example. Um, would you guys like to share um, the process, if not the, the product um, that you went through with the exercise? I'd love to. I think this process uh, confirmed that I am I am no Brunetti. Uh, and um, I also, I, in my failure of following your direction, Susan, I chose a book that I recently read, but didn't feel like I knew as well as, you know, I, I feel like you've probably like reread Pride and Prejudice several times. So as I was drawing, I, I'm like, oh, I chose um, a recent book, Susanna Clark's Piranesi. It's a, a short novel. Um, and in doing that, I couldn't quite remember the story well. So my um, four panels, which uh, are quite messy, um, are, are someone saying, what is this place? So they discover this big, messy place that they live in. Uh, and another person warns them of not um, exploring too much. Uh, and then wondering about the actual truth of the place they're in. And then they maybe escape, spoiler alert, for the end of the book. Um, but it was definitely a journey of the con the condensing. I'm always, we've done this activity a couple of times and every time when you give us the, it's been a minute and a half, I, I, I refuse to believe you because I'm so far behind at that point in terms of the, the speed at which we need to produce for this, but it's really fun. Yeah, I chose uh, Jennifer Egan's uh, A Visit from the Goon Squad, which is a book I adore. And this process made me realize how little plot wise I recall <laughs> from the actual book that it's so um, emotive and like grasping at a memory where like you, you, I, you feel connected to a, a personal understanding of the book, um, you know, as a reader um, connecting with the text, but the actual um, you know, chronological plot, because it, it's told all out of order. So, I mean, at the end, I just had my, my summary, let's see if I can put it here, of just uh, times a goon, because that's the one line that I definitely remember from it. And um, now being much older <laughs> than I did, was when I first read it, 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 it actually makes me want to reread it. Um, but going through the process, one, I mean, Susan, you point that out. Uh, as educators, it's always an essential thing. Um, I learned that from uh, my, my mentor teachers, and Tarot being one of them, that like anything you ask your students to do, you have to be ready to do. Um, you uh, Not that you have done it, but... Um, you know, that you're recently doing it, okay? And now for, for K through 12, you know, that might, maybe not every period you're doing everything, but I mean, in a, in a recent time span, to, to put yourself in the same space, both chronologically um, and, and contextually as your students, uh, that's very important. Uh, some other things though that I've, I keep finding whenever we do this, this activity is, just how much thinking is going on. Um, you know, the way Susan um, described it, you know, ending with a, a process of having your students go back and analyze to critique their own work, is, it's both metacognitive um, and just making them aware of their own learning process, their own struggles and what it takes to persevere in a task, 
um, how their, their, their brain categorizes and organizes things. But then also something that Antero imparted uh, to me early on in my education as a teacher is to allow students to become generative of content. And so this is an activity, uh, it can be seen as brief, fun, you know, in, in, in the parlance of like, uh, you know, middle and high school, like a do now activity or a quick fun thing before you get into the meat. And I think that you're missing the opportunity as an educator to see the value and the depth of the content being generated by your students. So allowing your students, both in what they choose when they summarize something and then what they choose when they make four panels and how they synthesize that into one, they're making the, these um, analytical choices. Um, they're, they're setting forth priorities um, and it's more than just memory it's more than just like a depth of knowledge level one of just recall it's really they're prioritizing information and then redistributing it and then that needs to be um, understood as equal to the original text because whenever we're asking our students to engage you know talk to the text is another term that we use that's what we're asking really is to have them be on equal footing with the authors that we're introducing and um but uh, other, other highlights of, of a simple activity like this, you're, you're bringing in um, dual coding theory, you're bringing in hybridity theory, where like multiple modalities. So you have students, the first two prompts, think of a, think of a book. All right, now we're just internalizing and then verbalize that in just the traditional writing, like naming it. And then now you, you're naming it by its given name, but then you are summarizing it. So now you're renaming it because you're, you're summarizing it in your own terms. But then to extrapolate that summary into the four panels is allowing a multimodal processing to then take the words and then if the words were lacking, let me use images to then build upon that. Um, or if I wanna continue writing, let me use images that then I can go back to and then find the words for those to then continue on. Um, so there, there's just, a full richness in this activity. And every time we do it in any arena, um, it's just delightful to see um, people of all ages in the workshops, um, you know, children who are there who might not have decided to go, but their parent wanted to go. And then they're doing this and then the parent is struggling and the kid's like, oh, I can do this easy peasy. Um, but it's it's it, like persevering through the, the level of rigor when it looks like you're just finding a classroom where a bunch of people are doodling into, into four funny boxes, but the level of thought that goes into it. And it really, it really sets up for ripe discussion or further um, writing or further activities as well. So. Um, thanks again, um, Susan, for, for coordinating and following through on that in this digital space. I really look forward to the time when we're in a room full of people seeing what other books uh, um, people choose to represent in this. Yeah, I hope we get to, I hope we continue to do this, but in non-virtual settings very soon. This this half an hour, at least for, for us, has flown by, uh, and we're excited to continue to learn with all of you. Um, and so please reach out uh, as you engage with us. Susan, any final thoughts? Well, just I just want to say that I'm uh, I'm excited to continue the conversation as, as you both pointed out this this has really you know um, been inspired by and encouraged by um, our, the friends and relationships and colleagues and, and wonderful folks that we've met through Comic Arts Conference, WonderCon, San Diego Comic Con has you know I just these conversations have been absolutely. Uh, inspiring. So I'm just grateful to, to my co-editors and friends, as well as um, all the people um, at these various organizations and those of you who are watching, because we really, as, as you pointed out, we really look forward to continuing this conversation about teaching with comics and hope to do it very soon with all of you uh, in person as well as virtually. So. Uh, that's one, it for me. You know, Thank you. Uh, one, one benefit of, of these virtual, you know, the WonderCon at home experience is that, um, you know, for it, it, we're able to connect with more people um, than would have fit in one room that could have made the, the trip over to California and Anaheim. And because of that, you know, we, we hope to be able to connect with more of you out there who are interested in this work, who are practicing in, in this work, um, work, you know, 
the, we, we are very proud of the work that went into this one publication, this one book, but by no means is this the final word in this dialogue. We actually hope that this can um, create more bridges to bring more people together in discussion around um, the ideas of teaching with comics, teaching through comics, teaching about comics. Um, so we look forward to those opportunities, be they virtual or, you know, hopefully to get to see more people face to face. We, we want to thank, uh, you know, the Comic Arts Conference for the work that they've done all these years. Um, they brought us three together. They brought so many people um, together as well. And but to Comic-Con International as well, um, we wanted to highlight the, you know, something they have running, uh, something new going on right now is they have an educator panel series that comes up on the Comic-Con website. So uh, we recommend you check that out if you're looking for um, other examples of people at work um, uh, doing these types of things. And um, we're very thankful for those opportunities. And uh, we hope you're all doing well, wherever you all in the world. And uh, we'll see you um, soon in person. Uh, Antero, any last words? Oh, thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys.